but the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Can you imagine what a bishop's miter looks like on those x-ray machines for Homeland Security? <laughs> Can you imagine what someone who doesn't understand what Christ has done for us, doesn't, who hasn't heard this morning's gospel reading, what they would see or think if they were to drop into our church this morning and see people dressed up the way that Father Nick and I dress up and worship the way that all together we worship. Imagine what someone who's not inside the church would think of this feast today as we venerate the cross and lift it up as a sign of victory, this instrument of torture and of death. In Syria and Iraq today, people are being crucified on crosses the way that Christ was crucified on a cross. Happenings that our civilized world has not seen in some time. So indeed it's a paradox. St. Paul says that it must be a folly. They're, they must be laughing at us as we worship the cross of Christ, as we <coughs> claim that the Word of God who took on flesh was enthroned on the cross. Enthroned on the cross. In the book of Isaiah, we read that Isaiah, 700 years before the birth of Christ, had a vision of God sitting at the high place. The high place is where the box, the, the, the Ark of the Covenant, was kept with the Ten Commandments inside. And Isaiah, who had never been into the temple, because he was not a descendant of the Levitical priesthood, and everybody who isn't family, part of the Levites, can't go into the temple. They brought their offerings to the outside, and only the priests went into the temple. Not just the temple, but he envisioned, he saw the Ark of the Covenant at the high place behind this giant curtain that separated the parts of the temple. And he says that he saw God enthroned. He saw God sitting on top of the Ark of the Covenant so that the Ark itself becomes the footstool, the place that the angels worship God, where God who is lifted up, born by the angelic hosts, by the angelic bodies, he's carried by the angelic bodies. So he saw our liturgy. He saw our worship. He saw the angel come with the palms or the spoon, with the coal that takes away our sins that we know today to be the Eucharist because Jesus, after his before his crucifixion, took bread called flesh and said, this is my flesh, and took wine, which was the symbol or staff of life, and said, this is my life. And unless you participate in my life, unless you participate in me, then you're not part of me. It's all about being one with God, participating in his life, sharing his life. So why did Christ need to be enthroned on the cross? Because he's the king not just of this world, but also of the angels, also of the spirits, of the universe, of everything in the air. So he had to be lifted up into the air to show that on his throne, 
which is the cross, the instrument of death, he shows his victory over death. That he accomplishes our salvation. He participates as a human being in our death. He knows what it feels like. He knows what it is to die, for our flesh to die. Crucified on the cross, his lungs filled up with blood and with water. As our lungs fill up with blood and water, as we are unable to pump our blood, when the heart muscle becomes weakened, the sac around the heart builds up fluids, you see? Builds up fluids and we fill up our lungs and we drown. And that's how people died on the cross, they drowned. Their hearts became weaker, their hearts sweat, and then the fluid around the heart prevented the heart from beating, and they couldn't get enough oxygen, and they drowned on the cross. So all of these things God accomplished for us, so that we can share his life, so that we can be one with him. And so it is totally reasonable for us to come away from our busy days and our busy weeks and our much earned rest time on the Lord's Day to gather and be fed by Him. Be fed by the sermon, be fed by the Troparna, be fed by the Word of God who feeds us first intellectually and then nourishes our body with Himself, with real life so that we can go back into the world and share the good news of the resurrection. Father Nick and Effie have been sharing the good news of the, the resurrected Christ for many years. And several times they've retired. <laughs> One of the priests, Father Elias Bittar, said to me, what does it mean when a priest retires? I said, it means you work the rest of your life for free. <laughs> That's what it means when a priest retires. Because a priest doesn't stop loving, he doesn't stop serving, he doesn't stop caring. And so Father Nick keeps coming out of retirement to do exciting things, to share Christ's life with people who are alive in Christ. I uh, was invited, I hope it's not a secret, but I was invited uh, to come in a, in a few weeks to celebrate liturgy with you as you have a special uh, dinner for Father Nick and, and, and Effie. And I have to be in Dallas. I have uh, six parishes to visit in four days. Uh, in, in the um, uh, Dallas-Houston area, and, uh, and it was just too many things to try to move and, and reschedule. So I came today to say thank you to Effie and to Father Nick for saying yes to God, like Mary said yes to God. As she stood and watched Christ crucified, so has Father Nick seen people suffering and, and crucified, sometimes in the flesh and sometimes by stupidity, just not knowing or understanding what's real and important. I heard this week of a woman entering into a second marriage and uh, she sent her kids to baseball practice instead of coming to her wedding because the coach said that if you miss practice you can't play the next day. So she chose to have her kids at baseball practice over uh, coming to her wedding. I don't know. It uh, seems to me that priests hear and see 
and get frustrated when people make what seem to us to be very strange choices. And that's how I think things are today, very subtly. We get distracted and forget what's real and what's important. What's real and what's important is that we share God's love and that we share that love with each other and that we support each other and share the ministry and life of Christ. Father Nick and Effie have done that in lots of communities and um, now they're doing that here but they're moving to a place, they've moved to a place where it's a little bit too far to drive back here every week and so uh, this community will be served uh, by um, another priest. But Father Nick and, and Effie are very much a special part of this community. It's not a secret to you that uh, other priests were not nearly as helpful or successful in their ministries in in this place for a variety of reasons. And so our church owes Father Nick and Effie very much. And in naming Father Nick Pastor Emeritus today, we recognize the fact that he will always be home and always be special uh, to us and, and to this uh, community. Uh, Let's offer the gifts on behalf of the whole world.